steadily decreased. 200 years ago, a typical distance that some whales could communicate across was uh, perhaps 10,000 kilometers. Today, on a typical day, the corresponding number is perhaps a few hundred kilometers. We have cut off the whales from themselves. Creatures which were freely communicating for tens of millions of years have now effectively been silenced. And we've done worse than that, because there persists till this day a traffic in the dead bodies of whales. There are humans who gratuitously hunt and slaughter whales and market the products for dog food or lipstick. Many nations understand why whale murder is monstrous, but the traffic continues chiefly by Japan and Norway and the Soviet Union. We use the word monster to describe an animal somehow different from us, somehow scary. But who's the more monstrous? The whales who ask only to be left alone to sing their rich and plaintive songs, or the humans who set out to hunt them and destroy them and have brought many whale species close to the edge of extinction. We're interested in communication with extraterrestrial intelligence. Wouldn't a good beginning be better communication with terrestrial intelligence, with other human beings of different cultures and languages, with the great apes, with the dolphins, but particularly with the whales? survive, a whale must know how to do things. This knowledge is stored in two principal ways, in the whale's genes and in their very large brains. We can think of their genes and brains as something like libraries inside their bodies. The information in the DNA, the genetic information, includes how to nurse, how to convert shrimp into blubber, how to hold your breath on a dive one kilometer below the surface. The information in the brains, the learned information, involves such things as who's your mother or what the meaning is of that song we're hearing just now. <laughs> 